Well, hey people, good afternoon. I'm going to, um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to try to have a conversation about something that probably shouldn't uh, crucify me. Um, well, I guess that's what happens if you talk about this topic. I want to talk about practical transcendence, meaning like what, what do we really mean when we have a conversation about transcendent experience what what is what does that really constitute is it something that only really special people get or is it something that all of us do or like what is that what does that really entail um i think it's important to the conversation about um that we're trying to have here about metamodernism or any of the rest of this certainly it applies hugely to concepts of personal autonomy liberty and the rest I have my own view I'm going to present it to you just take it as my own view I think it's it's a relatively well-reasoned view and it is also because it's my own recipe and flavor heavily biased by an expectation that it needs to be actionable, like something that you can really practically apply to your life. Like I, I have very, very little interest in faith claims, as I've said, or um, states of knowledge that are so abstract that they have no practical application to your life. I uh, have a tendency to suspect that the highly abstract or the highly unsupported um, is really driven by bad faith, meaning that it's not interested in inquiry at all, nor solutions at all, but rather um, obfuscation and uh, a deliberate intent to make certain that uh, you can justify the status quo and find comfort there well I mean that's not my interest so um, and I imagine that uh, for those very few of you that follow my kind of line of thinking which is probably you know less than a quarter of one percent of the world's population really um yeah it's it's the same so anyway i i'm not too worried about it uh but but i i will spin through it kind of casually here and offer up a couple observations as i see it and how i've experienced it and i hope that it's helpful now, I am of the opinion that what um, people call transcendent experience is actually relatively ubiquitous, and it's something that most of us have done. In fact, basically anybody who's capable of listening to this particular uh, little podcast here certainly has done. Uh, it's just that, like all of these things that we're talking about, transcendence is a path. What what some people call enlightenment is a path. It's all a path. It's a mountain that cannot be climbed. You can climb it as far as you can, but there is no final um, summit. No one's ever done it. that really doesn't matter like we we want to go as far along uh, along the path of development as we personally can understanding where we have come is useful in that uh, it's also useful in understanding what transcendent steps up that mountain might look like let's talk about it but before we get there, uh, allow me to just 
layout in the popular mind probably three classes of individuals who perceive this topic in different ways okay um, let's say there's class A who are people that have had transcendent experiences and understand them for what they are just grant me that for a moment this will become important there's class B there are individuals who haven't had transcendent experiences but they really desire to so they pretend they have and um, because this is the biggest class of people they set the bar for what most of us understand a transcendent experience to be which is really unfortunate this is probably the bulk of humanity right here and there's class C individuals who have had transcendent experiences and actually have them relatively easily and commonly but they don't see them as transcendent experiences because they are prejudiced in their view of what a transcendent experience might be because they've been lectured their entire life by the people who haven't had them who are in class B who dominate the frickin airwaves and are going to tell you what it's like to actually find nirvana this is a complicated layout here complicated landscape um, I think it be, can be made a lot simpler so let's do that we've all had transcendent experiences at one point we were all infants right we were all um, children infantile children that thought the game of peekaboo was cool and the magic of just seeing things disappear behind the blanket oh well, that was amazing wasn't it and then they came back just magically and then they went away and then it was magic that they came back okay anybody that's graduated from not understanding that objects can have permanence outside of the uh, domain of your own mind has had a transcendent experience the zeitgeist between not knowing that just what you're seeing exists and if you don't see it doesn't exist like an infant believes I shouldn't say that what an infant knows in fact that becomes important like there's a massive shift in zeitgeist there's a massive shift in fundamental paradigms that occur there at some point if you actually mature you will have to face object permanence when you face that that is going to be a very primal transcendent experience where you understand suddenly that the world isn't just something that comes out of your own head that there's other things out there that also comes along in a second stage as one matures as an infant where you start to understand that other minds actually exist not just objects but minds that there are other people out there who think other things and they have other needs that too is a transcendent experience it's binary when you understand that that's the case when you wake up to the fact that what you previously had modeled your world around was wrong and suddenly there are other people out there and you're like god i gotta rewrite my entire program here to figure this out this is what we mean by a transcendent experience this is what happens to you when you face 
transcendence. Your entire programming gets rewritten. Your entire w way of facing the world changes. Your actions, your postures, your everything that you do is forced. Forced to be different because you have acquired knowledge, gnosis, with a new way of facing the universe. This is transcendence. Now, if you talk to uh, anthropologists, um, there's basically three ways in which transcendent experience was forced in traditional societies, okay? Um, assuming it isn't spontaneously occurring, okay? But, I mean, just hang with me for a second. Um, meditative practice is one. Psychedelics is another trial by ordeal is the third I would probably add two more to that uh, but I'm just gonna leave it for now but I mean that's just kind of standard anthropology trial by meditative practice trial by hallucinogen trial by ordeal um, these are circumstances that you can find yourself in that are outside of the realm of the normal that can put you into a position where you are basically um, forced, I guess in one way or another, to um, adopt a new paradigm, okay? For myself, and I'm only speaking for myself, while I certainly can enjoy a meditative process, and I've certainly enjoyed plenty of hallucinogens, none of those um, have ever, for me, uh, provided an opportunity for a paradigm shift. They haven't. Um, meditation, while it's useful, is highly internalized, and as such, it doesn't create for me the opportunity to actually find what I'm going to say again, gnosis, knowledge that is meaningful enough to be actionable. And certainly while hallucinogens, um, while you're on them, can feel pretty profound. Again, when you come off them, I don't feel that I really get any kind of like meaningful lasting gnosis out of them meaning again knowledge that is re real enough and actionable enough to be part of a new paradigm you're like whoa dude that was really amazing but then you get up and live your life just like you did the day before which i would say was actually uh, indicative to what you had there was a pipe dream, not a transcendent experience. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, uh, but for my own self, having found value in those other routes, n neither of them have provided for me anything that was remotely transcendent. But trial by ordeal has absolutely done that over and over and over again. Let me describe it for you. So my most important transcendental experience came to me um, thusly. This would have been, I guess, um, 2006, maybe? I guess it was. And I had uh, finished building my uh, engineless gaff cutter there, Maka, kind of a modified Colin Archer pilot cutter type. And I was on my... Um, way to uh, Mexico, actually. Um, it hadn't been too much before this that my grandfather on my mom's side, who I had been unusually close to, he was an extremely private man. He would raised a couple of daughters. He'd always kind of res um, resented, I think, at some level that he hadn't had a son. And um, also, I think he felt rather unappreciated and misunderstood by his daughters, which is probably true. Um, before he died, he'd asked me rather pointedly to uh, 
to really consider and reflect taking up um, as best I was able uh, a certain kind of responsibility for the future of the family. He was also quite pointed about making the case that if I were to do so in a meaningful manner, I would probably be pretty well universally <laughs> hated um, for my efforts. He, uh, he was a very intuitive, intelligent, um, but uneducated man. Um, but uh, his, his native intelligence as, you know, a traditional wheat farmer of understanding um, and having a deep connection with, especially the natural world. I, I haven't met very many people that um, um, had that level of sensitivity, let's say. He knew what was going on. Both my grandfathers did. I mean, they did. They worked outside. They knew, they knew what was happening to the world. Anyway, I was on my way down the coast um, after this experience, and we were trucking along, uh, making pretty good time down the um, Washington, Oregon coast, listening to the forecast. I'd done that trip a number of times before in other boats. And um, Cape Mendocino there can be a relatively major obstacle with weather, so I was paying a lot of attention to it. And we were getting kind of spotty uh, forecasts out of there, and it sounded like typically, and it's pretty typical to encounter a summertime gale there, this one was blowing up pretty good, the better part of, you know, 40 knots. So I made the decision to kind of punch the boat offshore and try to come around the backside of that front. And um, kind of boisterous sailing, moving fast. Um, the, I mean, we could certainly see that the, uh, the gale was out there because the sea state was starting to build up um, pretty significantly, maybe close to two meters, maybe three and uh, steep and choppy and kind of breaking certainly anxiety inducing conditions for you know a boat that's 38 feet um, so I was certainly feeling a, a certain amount of strain and ordeal in that and this went on for probably 48 hours but I was successful and I ended up rolling around the backside of this front ending up probably 200 miles offshore at that point I think and uh, what had happened is the front got ahead of me and I ended up in a situation where I still had these two to three meter seas but the wind just fell to zero and uh, completely becalmed but in really kind of heavy rolly cross sea conditions incredibly uncomfortable and incredibly exhausting and incredibly frustrating remind you this is an engineless boat it wasn't anything to do but sit there and take it and um, so it did for about three solid days. And over that period of three days, just drifted into the current and rolled, um, still with seas big enough to occasionally break aboard. Rough, exhausted, didn't get a lot of sleep in, really uncomfortable. The noise of a rolling boat at sea is, is awful. You hear the strains much more in those conditions than you do underway. It feels very pointless. It feels very despairing. It takes a lot out of you. Anyway, yeah, so over a period of probably three solid days, I probably went about four miles. Um, but then the uh, blue whales showed up. And there was a pod of them. I'm not really sure how many. At least four or five. And including a great big elder statement bull male like just as big as they come and they surrounded the boat for another couple of days as I sat there and rolled this whole ordeal going on for pretty well a week and they kept coming up to the boat and coming very close to the boat over and over again one after the other and they would just come up to the boat and they would look at me square in the face with these great big dinner plate sized eyeballs with the long eyelashes and they'd stare me square in the face and then off they'd go and I mean if you've not experienced you know a blue whale from the 
vantage point of a small boat you know like for those of you who have seen like the dune movies you know when they approach you it, it feels not unlike you know the the crazy sandworms and stuff i mean they are so big um i mean if there is an animal that represents in an archetypal manner you know nature itself like coming and staring you square in the face well i mean a blue whale is pretty close to that so there i was and i was just completely exhausted to the point of collapse and honestly to be that close to something that profoundly um massive is is close to terrifying i mean it's exciting for a bit but it's almost as frightening as the waves in the sea and everything and I'd go down below and I'd try to get some sleep, really troubled sleep. But I, it was hard to sleep because I could hear the whales. And they would, they were coming by and I, you would hear them swim by. I mean, it sounds like a submarine going by. And there was just no escaping them, no escaping them. And um, that's how it went on. Now, there's no way in, in hell... I can actually tell you what I learned there because it's personal to me. I, I'm sure most of you guys are intuitive enough that you would know that if you were there, you would learn something too. Okay? But, like, this was a transcendent experience. It changed my life. It changed my entire zeitgeist. It changed my entire perceptual set. It changed all of my priorities permanently. And when I finally got to uh, San Francisco, like, um, my life path was different. There was gnosis there. You don't, you don't need to care about what it is that I learned. You just need to know that experiences like that can teach you. And I'm sure that most of you are astute enough to understand that. In fact, if I was going to channel a little bit of Aleister Crowley or something as bizarre as that, really, like if you, if you want to mentor other people towards the... Um, facility of having transcendent experience it's only descriptive again not prescriptive prescriptive is always fraudulent like no no like honest to god mentor writes a book that's called 10 steps for life but only frauds do that like a, a good mentor would write a book that's like 10 observations I've had in my lifetime you might. You neither want to rob other people of their experience nor misguide them. I mean, there's just tremendous humility that comes from the transcendent experience. Um, the only thing that I have to offer here is a um, path up the mountain that has reliably and repeatedly um, provided opportunities for me to have these experiences where my perceptual set, my zeitgeist, my abstractions and such um, have been expanded and uh, as far as I can see or feel personally improved I don't actually know if that works for anybody other than me but it has worked for me I'm giving you a description of a trail up the mountain that was attractive I'm not telling you how to climb now for those of you that have hung in here with me um, 
over the last little vid there about um, metamodernism and deep ecology, why I see uh, deep ecology as the fundamental moral crisis in humanity. Well, I mean, you can kind of see where I would get there. Um, as some of, some of you have said, well, I don't understand how I can have an intimate relationship with the natural world. And I'm like, well, yeah, I actually disagree. I think you probably can. It's just that you, you've chosen not to, right? Um, a lot of you have had dogs, right? Hey, you have a dog. I've owned a dog. Fuck, I've owned a goldfish, right? If somebody came and murdered my goldfish, I'd be pissed. Why? Because I have a relationship with the goldfish. If somebody came and shot my dog, I'd be really pissed. Why? Because the dog's part of my paradigm, my zeitgeist. Well, so, is, so is the goddamn blue whales, guys. Or the forest that's up the hill that is just about to be clear-cut for uh, a stupid subdivision for, like, money launderers. That is a big deal. Like, I feel it in the same visceral manner. Some of you have sisters. How would you feel if your sister was, like, raped by some shithead? How would you feel? Well, if your paradigm has been forced to be expanded to involve things larger, and transcendent experience always enlarges your paradigm, remember, we all start infantile, where you feel the pain of the loss of that forest up the hill just as viscerally as if some bonehead shot your dog, well, I mean, you understand where I'm getting. If it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't mean that we have a disagreement. It's just that you have not been privileged enough to be privy to have an experience like I have with blue whales. If you did... I believe you would share my opinion. It's really that simple. This is practical transcendence. So this was a whole pile to digest, I understand. Um, I want to present to you an opposing view because this is my view. I My view here is one that is pretty hardcore. Trial by ordeal, gnosis, knowledge demands action, that is the way up the mountain that uh, is important to me. Everything that I talk about, everything that I write, everything that I do is predicated on that. I'm extremely practical. But in the, um, in the notes, I'm going to give you a link to Ken Wilber's uh, Buddha at the Gas Pump lecture, which is brilliant. And it is another way of looking at this issue. Um, it is simply one that wouldn't work for me. I mean, a lot of people have tried Wilbur's way of doing it. I, I am assuming that it did work for Wilbur, but I mean, he's quite academic. I am not convinced that um, for many people, um, the more convenient academic or like, say, chemical paths um in adulthood will provide the next necessary leverage actually to create transcendental experience that is um, authentic enough to create gnosis or knowledge that actually changes fundamental paradigms I, I, I actually don't don't believe it uh, especially because I don't see it happening anywhere I mean, what I actually see is a whole pile of crap like your Deepak Chopra sorts who um, claim to have had like unbelievable, crazy transcendent experiences. They get paid a whole pile of money for like 
talking this stuff and then you see that well what do they do with this knowledge is they go out and buy the trashiest uh, diamond encrusted glasses that you could actually even come up with like I mean that's just goofy goofy stuff goofy stuff I, I, I don't understand well I mean I do I mean remember the conversation is dominated by individuals they can't do but want to do and they pretend to do I'm, I'm hoping here that you can be of you know some other class people that um, I would expect most of the audience here are individuals that are probably quite tuned in but may have not had the permission to understand the experiences that they've had um, at the profundity that they deserve, okay? And I think that it would be great to give us all the permission to see that we are in the club of individuals that actually do have transcendent experiences that are legitimately transcendent experiences and that we do have permission to live our lives accordingly because we are privy to knowledge, gnosis, that is beyond the common experience of the average individual. That's okay. That's how it is. If they haven't done it, they don't have it. We don't have to have a fight about it. We don't have to have a value judgment about it. It's just how it is. dangerous topic I hope it doesn't come across as pretentious because it's not just what I've done guys anyway I, I I'm gonna have uh, number two on this because I need to kind of dial up the details a little bit I hope this is helpful and I want to hear your feedback cheers <laughs>